sort of the fit that in the shared SQL part of the, of the cursor, there is what we call a parent cursor, all right, the one here, and the child's part. Now the idea of the next couple of slides is to explain what is in the parent part and what is in the child uh, part. So the parent cursor, I would say the key information which is stored in this cursor is the SQL text of the statement, okay, your query, or your update statement, whatever, okay. Uh, and this information is stored in the parent. There are a few other pieces of information, but this is the most uh, important one. So if we give a look to a short example, um, when a parent cursor can be shared, okay, between several sessions, okay, here I just create um, a table, it's content, it's not important. Maybe just notice that I flush the share pool so that it's completely uh, empty. Now if I run several queries, and as you can notice, these five queries execute exactly the same operation, they are just written in a different way, okay? Actually, there are two of them that are exactly the same, although how they are written. But the point is that since I write the, the, the query in a different way, uh, Oracle is basically not able to share a parent, SQL, a parent cursor for every one of these uh, statements, simply because the, share, uh, the sharing works only when the text of the SQL statement is exactly the same as the one which is already available in the share form. So if I check for this, uh, for this case, how many cursor, parent cursor I have in my, uh, in my library cache, and notice that you can see uh, the cursor, the parent cursor in the library cache through this view, $3 SQL area. Uh, it's the view that externalized the parent cursor. You can see that I have for this query four cursors, because as I said before, I executed five query and this, this query and this query are exactly the same. I mean, they're written in exactly the same way. Okay. So you, did, you see that one query was executed twice and the other query was executed only once, okay? So if the text of the SQL statement doesn't match, it's not possible to share the parent cursor. This probably is probably also one of the, of, the, um, of the reason why Oracle or the PL SQL engine is, um, let's say, more or less normalizing the text of the SQL statement before executing them. Uh, they put everything in uppercase, for example, just to probably reduce the amount of, of uh, SQL statement in the library cache. Now it's also important to see that if you have cursor sharing set to false or similar, uh, the rules change a bit simply because, uh, in my case here with false or similar, the value which is specified here, this literal value, will be removed because of cursor sharing. Okay, so if I run, for example, here, again, exactly the same query but with three different values, notice that the last one also have a different uh, was written also differently. Uh, at the end, I see only two parent cursor in the library cache. One is for the first three queries, where just the constant was replaced by a bind variable, and the second one is for the last uh, query. Okay. And exactly the same happens with, uh, with similar. Uh, in the library cache, I will not see a difference because are exactly the same uh, cursor. So I would say in summary, uh, parent cursor contains the SQL statement and it can be shared when the text of the SQL statement is exactly uh, the same as the one that you execute. The only exception is cursor, sh cursor sharing set to similar or uh, false. And uh, as I said before, you can find the parent cursor in the dollar SQL area. And to identify this cursor, usually you only need the SQL ID. And if you know the SQL ID, the SQL ID is nothing else than uh, the hash value based on the text of the SQL statement, you can identify a parent cursor. Okay. 
Next one, the child cursor. The parent contains the text. Um, the the uh, next important piece of information is the execution plan. Because without execution plan, as I said before, you cannot execute a statement. So the execution plan is a child level. And the second important information is also the execution environment. Okay. Also in this case, let's have a look for an example. <coughs> Again, the structure of the table is not important. Just notice that in this case, I execute exactly the same query, okay, several times, and every time before executing the query, I change the optimizer mode. Okay, basically I execute the query with every possible optimizer mode we have in um, a current database release. Okay. Now, since the execution environment is not the same for every query, a child cursor cannot be reused, simply because if the environment is different, then or the optimizer might generate a different execution plan, and of course, cannot be uh, shared. But be careful that the child cursor is not created because there is a different execution plan. Okay, if we check in this case, the library cache, and the child cursor can be uh, seen with the view with all our SQL, uh, SQL error is the parent, middle of SQL is the child. You can see that I have four entries. Every one of these parent uh, child cursor has exactly the same execution plan since the hash value is the same. Okay. But as I said before, the problem is that the environment is not compatible, so they are not sharing the child curse. They're just generating a new child, even though the execution plan, again, is exactly the same. And this is important because if you change the uh, something like the optimizer mode, it's probably not very important to uh, um, to have a different execution plan because uh, every one of these execution plan will lead to exactly the same result. But if you have difference, like in NLS settings, you might also have a different result set depending on your setting. Okay, so it's really important that the environment, okay, um, uh, fits what we are expected to. Also interesting in this case is to notice that there is the second child was executed five times, and as you can see, they say, okay, it was executed five times with the optimizer first row, first rows. But if we check what I executed, you can see that I used different first row settings. And every, for every one of them, you might get an, a different execution plan. But for some reason, it seems that they are not able to, say, track the optimizer mode at the most granular level. And so everything which is written with first row, it will be used, it will be reused. My opinion is more like a bug, because you can really have different execution plans depending on your optimizer mode. Um, but in the current database release, uh, it's simply reused. Okay. Now, if you, if you see a parent cursor with several child cursor, because in this case, as you can see, the SQL ID is exactly the same, so you are sharing a parent cursor for every one of these child. Okay. If you see something like that, uh, maybe you have a lot of child cursor, uh, usually, it's interesting to know why uh, the SQL engine generated so many uh, child cursor. And where you find the answer of this question is in this view, with all our SQL shared cursor. Basically, what you, you get in this view is, of course, you have some identifier for the parent, the child cursor. By the way, the child cursor is identified by the SQL ID and the child number. I would say in the common case, we'll see later on that it's not always the case, but usually it's SQL ID and child number is enough. Okay. And now what you are seeing in this view is, uh, notice that, the, also notice that there is the child number zero which is missing. 
it's basically for every one of the child that was generated, you get the information why it was generated. And why? You have several columns in this view. Basically, every column is a different um, reason why it's not possible to share a child cursor. So almost every, every column contains no, and then you have a column containing yes. So it, it tells you this is the reason why the SQL engine was not able to, to share the, the, the cursor. In this case, if I select only this row, is optimize, optimizer mode mismatch. So you exactly know uh, I was not able to share this child cursor because the optimizer mode is different between the two executions. But again, uh, the view contains up to more than, in the current release, more than 60 columns. And basically, every column is a different reason. It might tell you you do not have the privileges to share it. Uh, you are using a different schema, uh, whatever. There are many reasons. And for every reason, you have a flag in this view. Okay. The reasons are, let's say, documented, uh, not well documented, I must say, in the reference guide. You have some information about it. Um, but again, it's, it's a way to find out why a cursor cannot be shared. Um, also notice that if you're using 11.2.02 or 11.2.03, uh, there is another way to get information why a cursor is not shared. And there is a new column called reason, this column here, which is stored in, in exactly the same view. And basically, with this uh, reason column, you can extract information why it was not possible to share it. And as you can see uh, from the output, the content is XML. The idea is simply that depending on the reason, they can put more or less information or different information in this column. Okay. In this case, it's not really readable like that. So the best thing you can do is to, um, for example, here use an X query. Uh, or it's even not an X query. Uh, it's just using the XML table uh, function in this case, but it doesn't matter. Uh, but the point is that uh, in Oracle, you have plenty of function uh, to extract information from XML. And in this case, I can, for example, extract this information. OK. I was not able to, uh, let's say, uh, reuse the, sh the child number 0 because there is an optimizer mismatch. The child curves with was already available, was using our old rows, and I'm using first rows. Okay, for the second one, first row, rule, and so on. Just be careful that this con the content of this column is, it really depends on which flag was set. Okay, so you cannot, in general, have one single query that parses every possible content of this query. Okay, because the structure at the end uh, if you look here at the XPath expression that I used to extract the values, uh, okay, the initial part is uh, generic root child node one, but then you really have some, uh, some in this case, elements with the name of uh, what you're looking for. So, for example, optimizer mode insert cursor. Okay. So, depending on the reason, you have a completely different content in this view. But it's nice that we can extract this type of information because before 11.202, you only had information, yeah, this is the flag that we set, but you didn't have a chance to get more information about it. <clears throat> so in summary, child cursor can be reused if you are using the parent cursor, so if the text is the same, and if the execution environment uh, are compatible. So the one of the child cursor already stored in the library cache and the one, uh, let's say, of the statement you are trying to execute. And to get an idea uh, why um, child cursor cannot be reused, V dollar SQL share cursor can be used. And V dollar SQL contains or shows you the child cursor. Okay. And the identifier is SQL ID child number. As I said before, in the simple or in and let's say it's a simple uh, case. Now, let me show you when uh, it's not possible to identify a cursor with um, SQL ID and child number. And this is something that uh, it's not really new because of this bug uh, that you can uh, read on this slide. 
but it's something that with this, uh, with the fix of this bug, uh, it's uh, more likely to see. The point is simply that in some situation, typically when the number of uh, uh, child cursor is too high, Oracle can um, make, let's say, a cursor obsolete. Okay, and when a cursor is, uh, cursor is obsolete, basically it cannot be reused. So Oracle has to start creating new uh, cursor. Now what they did in 11.203, or if you install the, the one-off patch of this bug, is that basically a cursor is uh, made uh, obsolete if it has more than 100 uh, child cursor. This is because uh, what we experience with 11G, I mean 11.201 or 11.202, is that in some situations there were, there were a cursor with lot, really a lot of child cursor, and uh, because of the new way they are uh, protecting the cursor uh, through uh, Mutexis, uh, if you have a lot of child cursor, then executing, let's say, or parsing a query or a query SQL statement was, uh, uh, took more time, okay? So if you have cases with really a lot of child cursor, thousands of child cursor, uh, every time you add a new child cursor, an execution or the parsing of the executor was lower and slower and slower. So they decided to say, okay, if a cursor has more than 100 child cursor, we simply make it obsolete, and so we generate uh, a new one. And this is the, what you can see here, the parameter that was added uh, by this uh, patch, okay? Uh, up to 11.202, you do not see it. It doesn't exist, this parameter. Okay. Just to show you an example of that, um, So authenticity is just create a small table. Content is not important. Then I run this uh, PL SQL block. And here, notice that from one side, for every, uh, let's say, uh, every iteration of this loop, I change optimizer index cost adjust. And since I change it, the environment is no longer compatible between two executions, OK? And so Oracle should generate a new child cursor. So, what I do, I change the environment, and then I execute a query. Um, and also what is probably interesting to notice here is that, as you can see, also for the query, I, I use an execute immediate. So I ask why, okay, it was much simpler to write a query. Uh, but the problem is that in 11.2, if you write in a foreclose a select statement, okay, the PLSQL engine thinks, okay, I want to execute this query several times, so it makes no sense if I, let's say, parse it, execute it, fetch the row, and then I close the statement. So basically, they keep the statement open, okay? And the problem in this case, if the statement is not uh, reopened, uh, then you will never generate a new child curse because the statement is open. I execute it with a different environment, but since the statement is open, I can, I can do it, okay? So to make uh, my demo work, I have to use execute immediate, which uh, doesn't take advantage of this uh, optimization. And uh, in this case, I can really um, uh, show what I wanted to show you. And it's exactly that I have one parent cursor with 100 child cursor. Now if I look in the SQL area, I see that they have when I have a child cursor, and that for the moment the content is not obsolete, because as we have seen before, the limit uh, is 100. If I display the child cursors, it's not really interesting because it's exactly the same, but I just select the VDollar SQL uh, for this statement, and you can see that I have 100 rows with exactly the same value. Also notice that the address is always the same. That means that um, every one of these child cursor share the same parent cursor. Okay. Now, what happens if I execute um, a, a couple of additional statements, and now I set, again, five different values for optimizer index cost adjust. 
Okay. Uh, in the previous block, I used the values from 1 to 100. And now it's 101 to 105. Again, there are different env environments. And so the uh, SQL engine has to use a different uh, child cursor. But as I said before, uh, the idea starting from 11.203 is that if you are more than 100, then you disable, you disable, you uh, obsolete the, the, child, uh, the, the cursor and you cannot no longer reuse it. So if I select V dollar SQL area, it's interesting to see that I see only five child cursor, right, version count. Also interesting is to notice that I have a different address. So you really see that the, right, the cursor is stored somewhere else in memory, so we are not no longer talking from the same uh, um, parent cursor, and that is not obsolete, okay. So in this case here, you can see that the old parent cursor is, is no longer visible. My opinion is anyway somewhere in, uh, in memory. I didn't check it, but it uh, probably simply fret the space uh, that was uh, used for that. Uh, but more interesting, I would say if we select the child cursor, okay, here it's nice to see that we have 105 child cursor. So somehow the parent cursor was, let's say, more or less removed uh, through the view, but the child cursor was still there. But of course, okay, if the flag is obsolete, set to yes. So they should not be uh, reused uh, in the future. In future, And what you get is, of course, uh, the, the first, uh, the next five uh, new uh, uh, child cursor and again, here we have a different address. Okay, so you can really see that, okay, because of this new feature in, uh, introduced in 11.2 or 3, uh, the old one was uh, made obsolete and new child cursor were generated. And what, in my opinion, is clearly a bug in this case. Notice here the number of execution. Uh, if I go back to the PLC equal block. Execute. Yeah. I executed every query only once, but it tell, it's telling me that it was executed twice. So here probably they have a problem that they have two child cursor with the same SQL ID and uh, child number, and uh, let's say uh, mixing up some statistics. And something that really looks like uh, a bug in the structure, or at least in the view. Maybe it's just a view that shows you the wrong information. And even worse is uh, if you use DMS X plan, but okay, you I'm just showing that I have one other child curse, or at least I see one other child curse with one other, and five child curse with another one. And even worse is the case when you try to use DBMS X plan, which is the standard way today to, uh, to display execution plans, uh, in display cursor, for example, you only have the chance to specify a SQL ID and a child number, which as I said before, is usually enough to specify which child cursor you want to show. But in this case, if you look at the V$ SQL view, uh, we have two child cursor with this ID, okay? And so, uh, also, DBMS explain in this case is not doing a good job. As you can see, it returns you a nice error. It did some kind of Cartesian product of the results, so you are simply getting uh, wrong information in this output. Okay, I'm not aware that a bug was already open for, for this case, but uh, let's say it's clearly a bug. Maybe I should send a... a I send you a script and you open it, which is more more easy than uh, if I go and I open the SR myself. Fine. Now it's more or less a corner case, but just to tell you when, uh, uh, it's starting from 11.203, this, uh, this problem kicks in a, a bit more faster. In uh, previous releases, it was uh, kicking in only when you have really thousands and thousands of child cursor. So it was more, let's say, unlikely to see. But it's not something new. Uh, 
an intent to occur so can be set as uh, obsolete. Sorry? Yeah. No, I never change it. Also, it never happened to me to change it. Okay. So in summary, um, be careful uh, uh, if you're working with 11, 2, or 3. Uh, the address column might be interesting or necessary to identify a child cursor. And as I say, the VMS X plan doesn't do a, a good job in every situation. But I mean, when you get the output, which is also contains a, a, an error, it's not, um, yeah, you notice that there is a problem. Okay, an important topic to uh, go through uh, for shareable cursor is also uh, the one related to bind variables. Because of course, if you are executing the same statement but with different, let's say, values, uh, to be able to share the parent cursor, uh, enter for also the child cursor, you must uh, use bind variable. Otherwise, it's simply not uh, possible to share it. Be careful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, let's say I notice cases when it is reused, but in my opinion, it, they were more related to uh, the fact that the application was um, keeping the, the statement open. Because as I said before, if you have your statement which is open, it doesn't matter if it's done by the application or by something like client-side statement caching, it's open, uh, database level it must be available and uh, you can use it. So I saw some cases, but I think it's related to this uh, problem. Not, uh, it, it should not be reused for a new statement which is parsed after the moment that the flag is set to uh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, it's not reused. If you parse it after the flag was set, I, I never saw at least uh, such a case. Now, if you're using uh, bind variables, basically, uh, I would say your application is impacted in two ways. From one side, it might make the programming easier or more difficult, depending on how you, or the language you use. Uh, in PLSQL, it's much easier to use bind variables. If you use Java, it's much, much simpler to uh, not use them, for example. And uh, from a performance point of view, it might also be different. In some situation, you have an advantage of using them. In some situation, uh, it's a problem. Okay. So basically, bind variables should be used only when uh, they give you some kind of advantage. And the advantage, of course, sharing parent and child cursor. And this advantage, I just said, is that basically um, they uh, don't provide to the optimizer or to hide from the optimizer some critical uh, information. Okay. Now, when you're using bind variables, and if you're looking always at the parent and child cursor relationship, it's important to see that uh, bind variables, not the value, but the type and the size are part of the environment to use a child cursor. Okay. So if you execute exactly the same statement, but one time you give a, a basically a number, uh, variable and for the second execution you give a bar, bar card to a uh, variable, the environments of the execution are not compatible, so Oracle will have to create two different child cursor. But not only the type is important, as I just say, but also the size. Okay? And uh, this might be, let's say, critical for an uh, application like uh, Java where you do not specify the size of your string values. If you are in PLSQL, you always specify, okay, I have a, a string variable that contains at most uh, 100 characters, okay? But in Java, you just specify string, and then you can store how much information as you want. And this is a problem because every time you execute a statement, basically uh, uh, for the parse and the execution, uh, the JDBC driver translates the size of the string, 
with a bind variable at Oracle level. So every time you put a different text in your string, then you get a different bind variable definition at database level, or it's likely that you get, get a different uh, time. And of course, this might be a problem because if you cannot share the statement just because one time I used eight character and the other time I used nine, uh, it would generate too many uh, child curves. So to avoid this problem, Oracle is using what, you, what is called bind variable graduation. Graduation, okay. And here is uh, an example. Okay, first of all, these are the characters I use from my database. And why it is important because bind variable graduation is, uh, depends on the, on the, let's see, the, on the, on the character set you use. If you're using single byte or multi byte character set is different. Okay. So in this case, the default character set is single byte. Okay. Now, uh, notice that I execute here three insert statements. Okay. Um, with exactly the same, uh, the same, uh, let's say, bind variables, which are defined here. Okay. So as I said before, in this case, the bind variable are the same, so you should be able to use the parent and the child cursor. Okay. So we can see with all our SQL, we have only one child cursor, three execution. Fine. Now, if we increase the size of the bind variable, and before it was 32 bytes, now it's 33. And for a second execution, I increase it to 128. It's interesting to notice if I check with dollar SQL that now I have a second child cursor. Okay. And one more time, if I increase the values to 129 up to 2000, okay. I get again a different child cursor. Okay. And if we take a variable which is larger than 2001, and if you are in 11G, 4000 is the maximum, and the next release it will be uh, larger, uh, you get again a different child cursor. Why don't you get an because from bind variable graduation, what they do is, is that they basically use four groups. So they say, okay, what is up to 32 bytes? It's one group, the second group, 33 up to 128 and so on, okay? Simply because they do not want to generate a lot of child cursor for every single piece of information, okay? And what is important from this, um, it's also to notice that if you have a statement with 10, 20 bind variables, okay? And every time you have different combination of size, uh, again, if you are from if you're coming from Java, every different string has a different size. Uh, you end up with immediately end up with thousands of child cursor if bind variable graduation uh, will not be there. Okay, so more or less from the beginning, they, in, uh, they implemented all, also this feature. And if we check with all SQL shared cursor, as I said before, it's uh, the way to check why a child cursor cannot be reused. Then you can see that, uh, and be careful, this is only uh, starting with 11.2, there is a flag which says bind length upgradable. Okay, so you can see that this flag is set for three of these uh, child curves. Uh, starting from 11.2.2, also uh, the reason column contains some information. In this case, the reason is, okay, bind mismatch, Bind position, you know which bind. In this case, it's only one, it's not difficult. And here you also get the, the size or the maximum size of a bind variable. Okay. And also what you can do to check uh, what kind of binds were defined is to use something like v$SQL bind metadata. So you can see for every one of the child cursor, for each bind, okay, which data type was used and the maximum length. Okay, is the kind of information you can see. So if you have many child cursor because of that, it's uh, I think quite 
easy to see through this view uh, why there are so many child curves. No? And if you look at the, the production system, for example, for incest statement, it's quite common to see plenty of child curves. No? But from one time, you have a, pl a plain insert into table values. I mean, the execution plan doesn't change. It's always the same. But at the end, as I said before, it's not the execution plan which is important to generate a new child cursor, but it's the environment in which it is generated. Okay. And here I run exactly the same statement, but with uh, um, a national character set data type, uh, just to show that what is important is not the number of characters, but it's the number of bytes. Okay. So in this case, the limit is 16, uh, 64, and so on. <clears throat> so this bind variable uh, graduation. So since we are talking about bind variable, it's imp also important to quickly uh, talk about bind variable picking. Because as I said before, one of the main problems of bind variable is that they hide some information to the optimizer. Um, because if the optimizer do, do not have access to the value you use to generate your statement, then it's difficult to come up with a optimal execution plan. Uh, and so Oracle, since 9.9, they try to uh, get some information uh, before passing the statement through bind variable uh, picking. Okay. And from one side, it's nice because, of course, they are able to, uh, yeah, to generate better execution plans. But what is important is that you get a better execution plan only for the first execution. After the first execution, you don't really know if it's a good one or, or not. Just a, an example, I have a table with 1,000 rows. Basically, there is a the ID, which is the primary key of the table, contains all integer value from 1 to 1,000. Okay? So if I have the, all the statistics in place, if the optimizer has to generate execution plan for such a query, it knows exactly, ah, okay, I have to return uh, uh, the most uh, old rows in my table, so it will generate a full scan for this operation. Makes sense? And it also estimates, let's say, more or less correctly the cardinality of this operation. If I have a similar query, but I say I just want the first nine rows, also in this case, the optimizer knows what's going on, and it will generate uh, an index range scan in this case. Okay? So this is the advantage of not having a bind variable. Of course, if you specify a bind variable, as I said before, it depends uh, how lucky you are. The first one that executes a query is lucky because Oracle picks pick the value. So in this case, it knows uh, it's 990, so the guy get, gets uh, uh, a good execution plan. Okay, but if somebody else is coming with this ver uh, value, and be careful, since the text is the same, the execution environment is the same in this case, because the ID is, num is a number, so it doesn't uh, have to play with uh, bind variable graduation, then the parent is compatible, the child is, co is compatible, and they have to reuse it. But in this case, the problem is that this guy gets a full scan, even though uh, an index range scan would be much uh, better. Okay. And this is basically the problem of uh, bind picking. If you're lucky, it works fine. If not, you yeah, might have some uh, troubles. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And to uh, address this problem, Oracle introduced in 11G what is called uh, a adaptive cursor sharing, okay? Basically, uh, in the environment to decide whether a, a child cursor can be reused, there is also the value, or more or less, not, not the value, but the, the selectivity of the value which is used. So in some situation with 11G, you might see, um, let's say, uh, less problem with uh, adaptive cursor sharing. But the main problem is that uh, at least once you have to have a problem and then Oracle will notice that there is a problem and invalidate a child cursor and create a new one. 
with a question. Uh, I'm not aware that are not picked for a parse because you have to be careful. Uh, they are picked for the, for the parse operation. The next one, which is executed, if the parse and child cursor can be reused, there is no parse at all, so there is no picking. Okay, because the picking is only necessary if you parse a statement. So in the current uh, version, the pick, picking should always be done with. There was some old version where the picking doesn't work, for example, with, J, with some JDBC version. But with the current version, it should be done every time you parse uh, your statement if there is not something uh, wrong, let's say. Anyway, adaptive cursor sharing is a feature that, from one side, uh, is nice because uh, might solve some problem with bind variable picking. From the other side, what we noticed by custom-rated many of them or plenty of them had some problems. So uh, we had to completely deactivate the feature by some, uh, by some, in some situation. I would say with 11.203, it's uh, somehow better. Uh, but be careful if you go to, or do you upgrade to 11.2, uh, 11 uh, uh, you must be caref carefully test your application to know if you have a problem with that. Okay, now just a small uh, add about the session I will uh, have on uh, Thursday. Uh, the name is how to optimize and learn from its mistake. The idea is to cover uh, not only adaptive cursor sharing, uh, but basically the other, what I call feedback-based optimizations, which are implemented in Oracle, which are for 11G adaptive cursor sharing, cardinality feedback, and for 12C, uh, especially the dynamic execution plan. But the idea is just to cover, again, the feature where the optimizer noticed, or the SQL engine noticed that uh, uh, the optimizer did a mistake, and how the SQL engine is able to automatically, let's say, retune or do uh, better. I would say it's, uh, in my opinion, it's a very important topic because for many years, Oracle uh, uh, said, okay, if, Every, let's say, every stat uh, which is in place is good. We have all constraints, whatever. We are able to generate a good execution plan. But the fact is that when the statements are complex on or when the data cannot be described by the, op by the optimizer uh, statistics, there are cases where you simply get a wrong execution plan or not wrong, but I mean suboptimal. And in recent release, starting from 11G, they recognize that they simply cannot get an optimal execution plan in all situations. So they're trying really to learning while you execute something, okay? And with the 11G feature, it's more or less done offline, let's say. So you execute something, you have a problem, and then you, if you execute it again another time, uh, you will, uh, you will uh, get better performance. And with 12C, especially with dynamic execution plan, you will get uh, an automatic, let's say, better plan at the first execution. Okay, but again, this is what I will cover uh, at the end uh, in my session on uh, Thursday. So if you are interested into it, uh, just show up. I will be there for sure. Okay, in summary, um, parent cursor, Again, are basically the SQL text of your statement, okay? So you can share them if the SQL text is exactly the same. Uh, child cursor can be shared when the execution environment is compatible. And as I said before, there are more than 60 reasons why it might not be the case. So if you are seeing a lot of child cursor, just check with all SQL share cursor to see why it's not shared. And last point, uh, bind variables. Are not always good. I know that uh, probably often we say, yeah, just use bind variable all over the place. But in fact, even in 11G with adaptive cursor sharing, whatever, sometimes bind variable uh, leads to problems. So you selectivity decides when it is useful to use them and when it is not useful to use them. In my opinion, it's uh, worth. 
Okay, any more question, comment? Thank you.